Hi everybody, this is Tim Todd with Select Homes. Today, welcome to our second installment of the uh, Real Estate Today video blog. Today we're going to be talking about a different type of real estate, the type of real estate that the uh, uh, top NFL quarterbacks and high power offenses are going to be covering each, day, each Sunday in the uh, NFL with the start of the NFL season upon us. Uh, hopefully, uh, Philip Rivers and the Chargers offense mainly. Today our guest is Darren Bennett. Darren, how are you? Good to see you. How are you, Mike? All right. Thanks Good for joining you. us. Hey, no worries. Thank you. Thanks for asking. As I'm sure all know, Darren spent 11 seasons with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. uh, a se season or two seasons with the Vikings? Yeah, it's, well, one and a half. One and a half with the yeah. Vikings. Prior to that, was it 12 Thanks years in the Austin Bulls football? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, Darren's also working with uh, Rock 105.3 on the game day broadcast for the San Diego Chargers. Yep. And so I thought, what better person to talk to than Darren about, you know, what's going to happen this season? He's got all the answers as far as, you know, your Super Bowl picks, and he can just name your pool, pool picks all through the season. So here we go. What's going to happen, Darren? Start, actually, start off with the Chargers. What, what's your impression of what's going on there? Yeah, look, with the Chargers, there's been a bit of a tumultuous offseason. They had a couple of free agents hold out, you know, Vincent Jackson and Marcus McNeil. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we're still missing Marcus on the offensive line through preseason, but... Uh, uh, we've shored that line up. A couple of young guys, Brandon Dombrowski's come in and, and started playing uh, left tackle. So hopefully the experience he's had in the preseason will allow him uh, to protect Philip. We paid Philip $90 million in the offseason. We're hoping that uh, he stays on his feet uh, for this whole season. So, you know, it's going to be uh, a big season. I'm really excited. Yeah. The first game of the season, how, how could you start any better than Kansas City on Monday night in Arrowhead? I mean, it's a terrific rivalry and... and uh, you know, a great place to start the season. The it's Chargers. funny because when you and I were together at the Chargers, you know, you'd go to any of the stadiums throughout the country. Kansas City, for some strange reason, was always my favorite place to go because they're so into it. And when they say, you know, uh, they do the national anthem in the home of the Chiefs. I know, it's, you it know, used to annoy me. It used to I really know, fire me I know, up. But you know, I was talking about it last night. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's one of those stadiums, it's probably the loudest outdoor stadium in, yeah. the, in the league. Uh, they got in trouble for pumping, you know, crowd noise back through the speakers a couple of years ago. That's so right, that's right. it's, uh, but it is one of those places. If you can win in Arrowhead, no matter what the Chiefs' record is, no matter what the Chargers' record is, if you can win in Arrowhead, it's always a great achievement because it's it's always a loud place to go and play. So it's it's hard for your offense to work. Yeah, yeah. I think that game will obviously tell us a lot about where we're heading and what you know what the team's going to look like. Uh, you know, I guess from my standpoint, I worry that as a great team and you know a, a team that's playoff bound every year is there a window that closes and are we missing that opportunity because we've had so many great seasons and we just haven't got there my gut tells me no i think that window is still open for us and and it, it'll be interesting to see with the departure of like lt how it changes the dynamic of the team what's your thoughts on that yeah look bringing ryan matthews in i think is a plus i think lt needed a new start somewhere he's going to the jets i think he'll have a great season up there at the jets i just feel like as, as with me, when I, was, when I was finished at the Chargers, I knew my time was over, and I think LT knew that too. Uh, Philip Rivers has really developed into one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL right now, and I think he's at a point of his development as a leader and as part of this team, as part of this offense, where he's really uh, starting to take over. And so I think the loss of LT will be taken over in the leadership role, particularly by Philip Rivers. Uh, I think the loss of Vincent Jackson, I don't think we'll miss Vincent. I think uh, AJ Smith decided to move on uh, very early in the free agent process. Legadoo Narnay has really developed this year, Malcolm Floyd. Uh, I think uh, Buster Davis, I, I think, you know, and picking up Patrick Creighton from Dallas has been a huge plus for us. Uh, I had a mate who punts at Dallas. Uh, as soon as he was traded to the Chargers, he texted me and he said, Phil Rivers is going to love Patrick Creighton. So I think our wide receivers are taken care of, obviously with Antonio Gates. You know, we've got those short passes taken care of at the court with the uh, tight end. Uh, as long as we can protect Philip, I think we'll be fine. Right. Okay, so I think you and I are both going to agree we're going to chalk the, chalk the AFC West up to the Chargers. Let's I'm go not going to chalk the right AFC now. West up to him right now. I think, uh, you know, it's always, you want to get three or four weeks into the season and see. Kansas City's obviously, they've re reunited Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell from the old New England days. They were bo both those guys were fantastic in the development of New England as a franchise. Right. Uh, and so, you know, you've got Castle there. You've got a lot of New England parts at, K at Kansas City. They're trying to create an elite uh, franchise. Will it happen this year? Personally, I don't think so. Uh, I think the Raiders are better the, this year than they, they were last year, just because they've got a quarterback that will throw to Raiders players. I think. That's right. Ja uh, Jamarcus Russell was a difficult you know, choice as far as uh, draft picks. He, he just wasn't a great quarterback. Uh, and Denver, you never know what you're going to get out of Denver. Uh, there's three good quarterbacks up there. Uh, any one of those guys can start. I feel like there's there's a little bit of confusion because of Tebow being up there, mm -hmm. whether they'll have him start. Um, 
uh, or whether they'll stick with Kyle Orton. Either way, I, I'm not sure that, uh, that Denver is really going to be a big, a big part of this. But I, I'm not going to give char the Chargers the AFC West until three or four weeks in and we see what sort of Chargers team we have, what Kansas City team we have, what Oakland Raiders and also what Denver team we have. Okay, so staying with the AFC, yeah. who do you think are the powerhouses? You know, this is the interesting side of, uh, uh, of the, the, uh, the coin for me. Uh, obviously, Indianapolis is going to still be strong. They've got Houston this year and Houston this week. And, you know, Matt Shaw, he's got to step to the next level as a quarterback. He's been, he was traded across there to go and take hold of that franchise, and they were right on the edge last year. You know, everyone talks about them taking that next step this year. Uh, they've got great wide receivers over there, Andre Johnson, those sort of guys, you know, so uh, we'll see. For me, I think, you know, Houston's always one of those bridesmaids. They've always knocking on the door, but never quite there. Uh, and then uh, it'll be interesting to see tomorrow night, you know, Atlanta Falcons versus uh, Pittsburgh. That's going to be a that'll be a big a big test for both those guys. I think Matt Ryan's got to step up. He had sophomore blues last year at uh, at quarterback, uh, and Dennis Dixon starting for uh, for for Pittsburgh. I think it's going to be that's that's to me Pittsburgh is a is a because of the whole uh, Roethlisberger thing. They're in disarray. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. They've got a terrific coach there, and he's going to pull those guys into line. But to lose your starting quarterback for four weeks to start the season doesn't set you off on the right foot. So it'll be interesting to see how Pittsburgh goes this year. Okay, got it. And then um, on the NFC side, um, you know, obviously we've got uh, uh, the Saints who are coming off their first championship, and then the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to meet up early in the season. Uh, what are your thoughts about the NFC, AFC in general? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry, NFC. NFC. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure when the when the blog's going on, but uh, you know, obviously this is Thursday right now. We've right. got we've got uh, New Orleans and and Minnesota tonight. Yeah, this and won't so, be out there. By, won't be out by then. But so you guys will know what the result was. We don't. Are we going to uh, come up with? But the that's result? well, that's <laughs> one of the things that I'm really interested to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, will will New uh, will uh, New Orleans take the emotion that created that that wave of. Um, support last year uh, that pushed them. I felt like they were the team of destiny last yeah. year. You know, there was no one going to beat New Orleans. There was a couple of games there where they were, you know, out of the game. They came back, kicked a field goal to win the NFC Championship game. I think it's a, uh, that's one of those things that, uh, you know, it's hard to re recreate that emotion. Sure. Uh, Brett Favre, I think, you know, bring, coming back to the Vikings obviously makes him better than Sage Rosenfels and Tavares Jackson. But uh, I still think there's questions about his uh, ankle. I don't think he's 100% healthy. Uh, not a good thing to go into uh, against the defense who hurt your ankle in the game last yeah, year. Yeah, uh, so I see New Orleans winning that this year, uh, tonight. Um, and uh, you know, you guys, you guys will know. I'll either be a goat or <laughs> you're gonna look, I'll be, I'll yeah, be you're gonna either look good or bad. I'm yeah, <laughs> one, of, one of the two. Uh, you know, some some of the other teams in the NFC. It'd be interesting to see what Pete Carroll's doing up in uh, Seattle. Are they a team uh, that's really going to push in the NFC? No. Uh, the NFC North, I think, is the most interesting part, uh, you know, of, of all the, the divisions in the NFC. Uh, Green Bay is really, you know, with, with Rodgers, I think, has really stepped up. Uh, and, and both Detroit and uh, Chicago have done big things in, in free agency. You know, uh, Detroit went and got uh, Vandenbosch this offseason. They went and got Nate Burleson, who I played with at, at the Minnesota Vikings, who is a tremendous wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how Stafford goes in his second year. Um, and then uh, Chicago, uh, they picked up Julius Peppers, who was the biggest free agent in the offseason. So they're definitely both committed to the pass rush. Uh, will it make them uh, contenders for the NFC North? I don't think so. I think it's, if, if Favre stays healthy, it's out of the Vikings and, and the Packers. But that, to me, is going to be the most interesting uh, division in the NFC. Kidding. Well, listen, I want to go in a couple different directions. Yeah. Uh, right now, where we're sitting, we're sitting in athletic class. Yeah. When you came back from Minnesota, you um, had retired from football. Kind of want to go do something different, right? Yep. And so, tell us a little bit how about athletic, about how athletic cuts. Yeah, anything? athletic cuts was a sort of thing. Uh, it was owned by uh, my chiropractor, JJ Hevelin. Uh, he started this business. He built this business. And when he was building it, you know, I was sort of helping him with the concept, just bouncing ideas off each other. I really liked the business, and I said to him, "Look, one day if you franchise, I would love to uh, to buy a franchise off you. I think it's." It's a, a great business for me to be able to use my name here in San Diego uh, and allow um, you know people to know uh, a place where they can come and have a chat to me about uh, what's going on in the football season. Sure. Uh, I'm coaching over at La Costa Canyon this yes. year at the high school with William, my son, yes. and uh, and so a lot of our, our kids come in here, get their hair cut, and we talk football. You know, it's it's a great place to meet. You know, we've got all the we've got the big screen TVs. Uh, people watch the game in here all the time. 
a lot of people come in and, and watch, you know, they'll come in half an hour before they get a haircut and watch the games or, or whatever. We've always got sport on in here uh, and the kids play video games where they get a haircut. So it's a, it's a, a lot of fun. We enjoy it. And there's a location here in uh, Encinitas and then also in Escondido. Well. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're on El Camino Real, corner of El Camino Real and Encinitas Boulevard. Just across from uh, Ralph's and Trader Joe's, so okay. and then over in Escondido, uh, we're at East Valley Parkway between Homebo and Albertsons. So, uh, you know, two locations, and uh, and both of them a lot of fun to go to. Okay, good deal. Uh, you mentioned Will, one of my most my favorite people in the world. I know he's had a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and go into that a little bit. Tell us what, what's happening with Will these days. Yeah, my oldest son Will has uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, this year, he's a freshman at La Costa Canyon High School. Uh, the head coach, uh, Sean Sovercole, came to me. Uh, this off-season, uh, I was watching flag football, uh, came up and asked me if I'd like to coach um, and I said, look, I will coach if, uh, if Will gets a chance to coach as a freshman. Obviously, he can't play the game, but he loves it and knows the game. And, uh, and so he's been coaching over there since May this year uh, and the guys have really embraced him and taken him on. Uh, there's sometimes at night practices he doesn't come with me because he's tired from the, day, uh, the day's games and he sort of grills me for what happened at practice. He's a big part of it. He knows a lot about football and, and when he makes comments to my kickers and punters, they're actually his kickers and punters, uh, you know, they take on what he says because he, he's, not, he's not full of a lot of, a lot of uh, advice. So when he says something, he knows what he's talking about. Good deal. Tell us a little bit about the uh, coach. Do I have a right coach for a cure? Yeah, so uh, it's a thing that Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy is doing. Um, they've done it for two years. There's a lot of high school and, and college coaches uh, on, on the 25th of September, depending on uh, what day your game is, but that weekend, uh, coaches will wear a patch call, uh, with coachforacure.org. Uh, people can make donations, and um, all, the mon all the money goes towards research to find a cure for, for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, it's a terrible disease, um, and we live with it every day, uh, and the sooner we find a cure for it, uh, the better it'll be. Um, you know, he's, Will's got surgery coming right now, uh, to have a rod installed in his back um, just because he's, he has pretty bad scoliosis and it's very uncomfortable for him and he can't breathe properly. So it's one of those things, if we can find a cure, a lot of that stuff will be avoided. Okay, got it. Well, I did mention on the on, in the onset that uh, it's a real estate today blog. Yeah. Uh, What's going on with so real bring, estate? Bring you're, my, you're my real estate guy. What's going bring, on? Bring it back to real estate and just you know tell people watching. you uh, When you left uh, Minnesota, Four years ago, you chose Carlsbad as your home. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about living in Carlsbad and living this Southern California dream. You know, uh, we lived in Solana Beach when we went to Minnesota, before we went to Minnesota. When we came back, the real estate market had jumped so much here. Solana Beach wasn't really uh, affordable as a family place. Uh, and so we chose to come further north to, uh, we're sort of north Encinitas, south Carlsbad. Uh, it's a tremendous place. The schools here are fantastic. La Costa Canyon's the high school. Uh, my son Thomas goes to Degano. There's uh, a leader named Pioneer and, and Mission Estancia are, uh, are the elementary schools in our area. Uh, the great thing about where we live is we're about half a mile inland, and so when that marine layer sits right on the beach there, uh, we sit in blue sky, and, and it's not too hot here, so we really like the climate here. It's a very family-oriented neighbourhood. We live in a cul-de-sac where uh, there's a lot of kids the same age as our kids, so there's always stuff to play, you know, kids to play with, and they're always out in the street. Uh, and very social. Um, I think that the school district is extremely supportive of someone like William. Yeah. Uh, he has a, a great aide, Tate Sanderson, who's a rock guitar guy from Encinitas, All but right. he's been his aide now for four years. And, and so we feel uh, that this is our home. Um, you know, I'm about, uh, actually next Monday, I have my citizenship interview. So if any of you don't want me to be a citizen, call the, uh, <laughs> the uh, Department of Immigration. But um, uh, to become a citizen. By the way, we're not. Gonna, by the way, we're not going to provide a number for. No, that. that's right. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, we, Rosemary and I are taking citizenship because we feel this is our home and this is where we'll live forever now. Uh, and I feel like uh, you know, within about two miles of where we are is where we'll always live. That's great. Well, listen, I've taken up a lot of your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today and uh, have a great season at Rock 105.3. Yep. And. Uh, I gotta say, it, go Chargers, man. Go you know, Chargers. Like, yeah. yeah I, look, all the stuff we say about the Chargers is is just analysis, but we really want. Good seeing you. Good on you. Thanks. Man.